Okay. And how has the COVID-19 pandemic affected the services at the center? Once it became apparent that there was going to be a lockdown here in the Netherlands, that schools were going to close, uh, it was in March, uh, due to COVID, uh, I called a meeting of our BCBAs at, at REACH, REACH BCBAs, to discuss the plan of action. Um, this was not something that any of us had ever, just like all of you, uh, encountered. So we really needed to kind of put our heads together to figure out what was the best course of action. Uh, so what we decided to do was we created a parent resource folder and we put in there everything that we thought the parents would need during this lockdown period to best help their child. Um, it was stuck full of resources and information and uh, different things about COVID, ways to tell your child about COVID, uh, washing your hands, demonstrations of washing your hands, um, all sorts of res free resources that also were uh, available during this lockdown period, which were fantastic. Um, so we really put tons of information into this parent folder and sent it out to them as soon as uh, the lockdown period started, uh, which was, as I said, was in March. Um, we also put together a video uh, for structuring your home program so that parents uh, understood how important it was to uh, put to get a structure going for their child because that was the only way that any of us would be able to survive this uh, pandemic, uh, this lockdown period. Uh, our children need, as you all I know, um, they need structure and routine. So it was important that that was continued um, as soon as they uh, were home. So we created a video talking about how to make that happen and how to structure it. And uh, so that was sent to the parents. We offer telehealth services. So any of the kids that were able to um, do a sessions online, some of our older clients, uh, th that was offered. And I have to hand it to my team. This was not something that they had ever done before. And just from my own experience with my son, they did such an incredible job in making the telehealth, the, the sessions very engaging. Um, it was really interesting for me because it had been a while since I uh, worked with my son like this. And um, it really brought me back to the days when we first started uh, working ABA at home. Uh, and it was a good training experience for me. And it also helped me to understand where my son was, uh, you know, academically, where he was uh, in, in, uh, in development. Uh, and I was just, I must say, so surprised and not surprised, but just so proud of him. He really handled himself so incredibly well during this time. And I learned so much and my husband did too. We all were part of the program. It was exhausting and it made me understand how difficult the job of a therapist and a teacher really is. But it was, uh, it was amazing uh, to be a part of that. Um, we also, I uh, also um, sent messages or emails to the parents on a weekly basis, just uh, checking in with them to see how they were doing. Unfortunately, um, I'm sure as you all felt, they were very overwhelmed uh, at first. So it took a while for parents to engage. Um, I didn't want to put too much pressure on them to engage because I know everybody handles things differently, but uh, it was important that we uh, try to keep a connection with them. Uh, I didn't want our parents to feel isolated at all. Um, we also, as a team, met uh, weekly and had. Um, uh, game uh, and game uh, video chats and did uh, fun things, uh, happy hours on Fridays. And we, um, we all had to be uh, connected as well because we were all isolated. And many of our, all, most, most of our uh, therapists are from other places. So, you know, they couldn't go and see their families either. Uh, and it was hard for them to, to be far away from their families. So, um, we were able to keep our family together here in the Netherlands uh, and through uh, 
um, these uh, video chats. So that was really great for the team. Um, and also the, we did, we offered parent trainings as, as well um, to our families, to the, mostly for the parents who weren't able to, uh, whose child wasn't able to do the, the sessions online, um, which really was incredibly helpful for many of our parents. Uh, and also our BCBAs kept in touch with the parents just to check in with them to see how they were doing uh, on a weekly basis. Um, so we really did try and make sure that we had continued the connection. Uh, and we did that up until um, May when we were able to open gradually again. Uh, and what we did was uh, in the beginning, just have the kids who weren't able to do telehealth sessions back at the center. Uh, and it was just one therapist to one child and nobody else was uh, allowed to be in the room. Um, and we also, uh, after all of this, it, we use this as a learning opportunity as well. Um, I sent a survey, we sent a survey to the, the, the team to see how they felt we communicated um, uh, the guidelines and everything to them uh, and uh, how they, if they felt supported. And we also um, sent that to the parents uh, and Ask them, you know, what did they use uh, as far as the resources that we uh, sent them? What would they like to see if, God forbid, this happens again? What would they like to see done differently? Um, so it really has been a learning opportunity for us at Reach, um, and we have learned a lot. And we're uh, still going. We're going to. Um, we learned that uh, some of the parents did feel a bit isolated. Um, so we want to make sure that we uh, have an ongoing dialogue with them, a parent coffee hour. Uh, so we're doing things even post uh, lockdown period uh, for the parents. Uh, and so it, it's been um, an ex a learning experience for all of us. Anessa, what was that period like for you? Um, I would rather not think about that period. <laughs> no, it's um, it was a very, very, very hard beginning of the when the crisis started, and just basically overnight um, we had to stay home all the time. I think my son was very confused because he's very energetic. He he's just, I, I think at some point he he has also some mix of hyperactivity in all his diagnoses. Um, but so he's a very active child and he had had this amazing routine uh, of going to these centers, which he really loves. And that stopped. So I think the first week he was kind of cool with it because he didn't know what was going on. And then the second week he started behaving really, um, uh, he, he started having meltdowns. So whenever we would come back home from anywhere, basically the lucky thing that was for us that in net uh, in, um, in the Netherlands there was no not a total lockdown so you could still actually go with your children outside you know as long as you kept distance of course and as long as um, you would wash hands and take all the precautions um, so that was lucky for us that we could go outside with him at least to playgrounds but uh the second and third week were really awful. I mean, I was at the verge of crying almost all the time because he was just having meltdown after meltdown. And actually, it hit me so hard because my neighbors, uh, and we have kind of joint houses here, and uh, my neighbors also had their kids home, but you would, and, and it was warm, so all of us had our doors always, and our, uh, we were always in the garden, everybody. And you would just hear your neighbors kind of, you know, singing and talking to their kids and having fun. And it was so nice to hear an eavesdrop there. And whereas in our house, you would hear a constant screaming, hitting doors, hitting himself. And he's never done that. He was never aggressive. Um, so it was a really, really hard period. And at that point, uh, we started having also some... Um, like guidance sessions with Reach. Um, so I had uh, help of his um, favorite two therapists, you know, Canons, uh, in actually um, um, 
while managing those meltdowns. So they came up with a couple of ideas what to try and how to, um, you know, prepare Canon for the transition, for coming home, for going outside. Um, so that helped really a lot. It gave me a sense of uh, being in control because before of that, I really, I lost um all sense of any kind of control. I was just dealing with this hot mess, hot mess of a child. Um, whereas my neighbors, they were always laughing and cutting hair in the garden, you know. So I was, I, I felt really. I think when when I think about it now, I I was just depressed and I was probably um, feeling like a failure. And um, you know, uh, well, if my child behaves for the therapist at these places that he usually goes to why doesn't he behave that way home with me i must be failing somewhere i'm not a good mom and all oh, their nice thoughts you know and nice things you tell yourself when you're not in a great place anyways i had really great support from uh, from a uh, uh, reach therapist and they came up with ideas and they came even up with more ideas than i could um, um manage to implement <laughs> And eventually, yes, my son did calm down. And then, um, uh, yeah, we had this program when I worked with him at home. And as Catherine said, um, it kind of reminded me of the first days when I was the one constantly uh, working with him and trying to, um, you know, teach him stuff. Um, so all in all, the last uh, couple of weeks of the, I don't know, how long was the whole uh, uh, lockdown? From March to May. 15th or something yeah March 15th to May 15th mm -hmm. oh yeah so two months yeah. yeah so for for the um last uh, two three weeks it was really um it was okay I mean we've managed and then the Netherlands opened up the system uh, step by step um so that we could uh that also my son could actually get used to uh, the old ways uh like step by step so he would go like one day to one center and one day to the other and um it was all in all a really good experience um when it all started working again <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> moji what was that transition to home services like for you so um like anasa it was really really from friday he went to school monday there was no school. <laughs> and so for my son, this change was just really the first day he thought, okay, maybe it's a long weekend. <laughs> and then Tuesday, okay, maybe it's a longer weekend. And then by Wednesday, he was thinking, well, this is not looking right. And so I, um, I said to bring out some of my old programs that I used to do with Matthew when we had home programs, trying to kind of build some structure into his day. And, um, and we just, you know, I would do a lot of outdoor stuff with him because that was what he enjoyed doing a lot. So we would do lots of cycles and things. So the first, the first week or so was okay. First two weeks. And, but then, um, my husband got sick and we were not sure what it was. And so we all had to self-isolate for 14 days. So we couldn't leave the house for 14 days. Wow. <laughs> Uh, so just, um yeah so that was every time was, I hear that I yes. uh. <laughs> so that was hard that was that was really hard that was that was some of the most difficult moments of my life and mm -hmm. um and trying to explain to my son who could not really understand why he could not see his dad even though his dad was in the same house because we had to isolate him because we didn't know what it was and they were not testing at the time. So we didn't want to take any risks or any chances. And so it was, um, it, yeah, it was tough. And we, we got through those two weeks of isolation and then we started to go out again. And, um, but by and large, you know, I think what was positive for my son was, was that his other two siblings were at home with him and he really enjoyed their company. And we were also very fortunate that the weather was nice during that period. So he could be outside in the garden quite a bit. And, um, and, um, and so in general, you know, bar those two weeks where we had to uh, quarantine, um, the, 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 the period was, was okay, but getting towards the end, he was, he was losing the plots because he was just like, this is, 
just monotonous every single day. And um, you could go out, but at the same time, you didn't want to go out too far from the house. So you were really literally doing the same thing every day. And so it was a relief when we could all start to go back um, into some form of normality in May. And I thought it was very well done again because it was a very gradual kind of transition. And initially, of course, there's anxiety because you're thinking, oh, okay, well, there's all these other kids. But I have to say that um, my son goes to reach, but he also goes to another center where he is. That's where he is primarily most of the time. And they did a fantastic job in communicating um, um, what their COVID protocols were and how they intended to keep the kids safe and and what they plan to do with them in terms of all the precautions necessary to try to minimize any form of um, transmission. So um, so that was really good. And um, yeah, Mm -hmm. so, but now we're kind of, yeah, I think we're back to normal now. Yeah. What is the situation like in the Netherlands? The schools are open 100%? Yes. Schools are open 100%. Yes. My kids are going to school every day. You've been watching Autism Knows No Borders. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Also, we'd love to hear from you, so let us know what you think in the comments section. Click here to watch this interview in its entirety. You can also find us on your favorite podcast app. Tune in each week for engaging conversations of how people across the globe are inspiring change and building community. Thanks for watching. Take care.